There can only be one. And I'm referring to this. This is a 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. And this one is the Hybrid Max. It is basically the top of the line, the top of the line of the top of the line version of the Highlander. Hence, there can only be one. Or, of course, we could be referring to a movie called The Highlander. One of my favorites as a kid, the reason I mentioned that movie is because they're going to do a sequel to it or a reboot. Now they tried a sequel before and it failed miserably. And that kind of reminds me of the Highlander. The very first version of the Highlander hybrid was actually, I thought, pretty good. Progressively, as they kept building them and generation after generation, I felt that they were losing their edge and became basically station wagons with a really uncomfortable third row seat, especially the hybrids. That's changed because we now have the Grand Highlander. And honestly, if you like Toyota Sequoias and you thought about buying one, I recommend you look at this because 90% of you guys probably want this and didn't realize it. There can be only one. <clears throat> I'm not saying that the new Highlander and the Grand Highlander are rock and roll versions of family movers, but they certainly have a little bit more grit, and that is a good start. And you can really tell with the front end design. Now, one thing they got rid of was some of the swoopy, squinty, unhealthy lines. I call it unhealthy because to my eye, I have to squint and I feel very bad about looking at it because I say to myself, wow, the Highlander used to be kind of cool looking or interesting looking and now it's not. Well, they've sort of brought back the almost interesting look. Look, I'm not trying to just backhand compliment this thing. I think it's better than before. And I think that simplicity has really helped it. So you can tell with the front end design. That chrome strip, I think, is a great idea. And at the same time, the headlight design, instead of it being really kind of wonky, which is what I thought the previous generation is, I think it's a relatively simple, logical setup, but it's an improvement. All of it's an improvement. This Grand Highlander is longer quite a bit longer than the regular Highlander. Now they stretched the wheelbase a bit, but what's really noticeable is the overall length, which is over 201 inches. And even though they stretched it out, which is six and a half inches longer than the regular Highlander, by the way, they've managed to just make it look pretty balanced. I actually really do like the design. They were smart enough to make the wheels large enough and the tires fill this area. So kudos to Toyota for that. Now there are two exhaust. Yeah, that's right. Dual exhaust, baby. This is one of the few Highlanders that actually has that. And I think it does actually help the looks nice and balanced and looks almost sporty. Also helps that this thing actually has some real power. We'll get to that in a second. Now look here, hybrid max. And then of course you have platinum over here. And that is indicative of the price. Oh, wait till I get to the price. All right. Now this is where some of the magic is. Oh, it's a kind of a heavy hood. What you're looking at here is, of course, a hybrid powertrain, but it's also a turbocharged powertrain. Gets better. First of all, what you're looking at is a 362 horsepower, 2.4 liter, four cylinder engine. Now that horsepower is combined because it is a hybrid. Puts out 400 pound feet of torque combined, right? It's hooked up to a six speed automatic transmission, not a CVT, not a continuously variable transmission. I am thrilled about that. So with all that good stuff, is there any negatives? Well, some of you might say, mm, it only gets 27 miles per gallon combined. For a vehicle this size, that's really good. And it has stupid power for a parental form of transportation. But there's more because it's a hybrid and it's a Toyota hybrid as such. The rear wheels are powered by an electric motor. All of this means that it can do light off-roading, but it also means that this vehicle will be decent in snow and ice and foul weather. All of that's great. One final thing. There are two other types of Grand Highlander that you can get. There's one, which is the entry level model that has no hybrid option. That's your entry level. Then you go up to the regular hybrid, the non-turbo hybrid. That's your next step. And then this, this is the top of the line. Once again, at 27 miles per gallon combined <laughs> for a proper three row vehicle like this, that can, by the way, tow up to 5,000 pounds. That's pretty good. All right, let's open this puppy up. 
There is one negative right off the bat, and that is that the rear hatch doesn't have a separate opening glass like some of the competitors. Some of you guys will like that, some of you guys will dislike it. But you know what you're gonna love? This is around 21 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row. That's actually damn decent for a vehicle in this class. Oh, but there's more. Check it out. This, ba-bam! Now, important to note, almost no space in here and that's because you have this and this is the cargo cover that you put over it's actually in front of the third row so in other words when you fold the third row you could put up the cargo cover and cover all your stuff up which is great but if you don't need it you retract it pop it off and drop it back here so a nice little cargo space for that yes of course there are tie downs here we go you can clearly see on both sides in the back i love the fact that they retract like that so cool to have. You know what else is cool? 1500 watt AC 120 volt. Boom. That's cool. And then because it's the top of the line version, this has an 11 speaker JBL sound system. All right. Now a quick note here. If you don't pull up on this really hard, it won't go very easily. Like if you go like this, it won't go. You gotta go all the way up. But once you do collapse it, the headrest will drop on its own and it'll fold flat. I'll do it right here. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. That is 59 cubic feet of cargo space right there. Just like that. Second row utility. Now there is a bench seat available for other Highlanders, but you cannot get it with the top of the line because they feel that if you have too many children, then you're lower class. That's the only explanation I can figure. Okay. So there is a lever down here that you have to pull if you want to fold this flat. Then you pull the top one. There it is, woohoo! It really is unnecessarily complicated to fold this flat, but the good news is, if you look at this and this, it is pretty darn flat. I sounded like Tommy there from here to here, meaning, of course, that you can lay flat things in here and large things. How large? Well, you've got, when all the seats are folded flat back here, 98 cubic feet of cargo space. That's more than the Toyota Sequoia. All right, let's start this puppy up because looky, looky what we got going on here. And eventually here, there it is. Okay, now, first of all, both these screens are related. Both are 12.3 inch. So the digital gauge here actually shows quite a bit. So if you decide to use different types of modes, there's mud and sand, rock and dirt. There's normal, there's an eco and then there's a sport. What's weird to me is that you twist to get to rock and dirt, you twist to get to mud and sand, you push this for normal. By the way, a little bronze, a little thing on the bevel, but they're not buttons here, right? But these, eco, that's a button, and sport is a button. You know what else you got? Snow, sure, snow right there, and hill descent control all buttons. In this regular setup here, it is still going to show you where the power is going and where the power is coming from. So at this point, it's going to run the engine to power the battery. When you're driving down the road, this will change depending on what you're doing. If I put my foot down, it's going to combine the electric power with the gas power, making this vehicle faster and it works quite well. Real knobs for temperature, great, and real buttons. By the way, I didn't mention this, um, but these some of these controls, you're gonna see them in the back seat as well. You'll see. All these, look at that, are levers. Do you have a volume control button right here, which is also for power? Uh, yeah, you don't wanna hear that. And then of course you have your selection of screens right here. One that I do like is this. Now this actually gives you very simple controls to work for the climate system, trip information, I do like this graph. And recently I drove a Prius Prime and had a very similar type of graph and I was actually really digging it, especially this one. I love this. I leave this on whenever I'm driving this vehicle because as I'm driving it, I have a very clear graphic of not only where the power is coming from, but which tire is getting power. A couple other things that you might be interested in, that is including this massive sunroof, moonroof, panoramic roof. And in addition to it being able to open that way, look at that. You can actually move the glass and have a pretty damn decent sized opening. All 
And we're just telling you that it's a turbocharged engine in addition to having that electric motor, actually two electric motors. Well, what this means is, when I go right here, and I slow down just a little bit, I'm not in any particular mode. I could put it in sport, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna accelerate. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's not a sports car, but it gets up and goes, and it gets out of its own way. And best still, we're at high elevation. We're in Boulder, Colorado. Rocky Mountains are right here. And this thing does not suffer from any power loss that I can detect. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that if there is a lag with the turbocharger, the electric motor, motors I should say, make up for that. And it just scoots it and gets it going. So that is a huge positive. Another positive is the fact that the handling and the ride comfort are really good for this class. I would say right up there near the top really really good in fact if it didn't have these big 20 inch wheels and it had say oh i don't know 19 or 18s with a little bit more rubber on them the ride would be even better and i don't think you would sacrifice much in terms of overall handling okay now we've talked about that i want to talk to you guys about something that does not make me particularly happy this eyesight thing which actually is watching my face and my eyes and it yells at me every single time it thinks I'm not paying attention. Now imagine you're driving you know, down the street and you're having a conversation with the person next to you. And what I do sometimes as I'm driving on the road or whatever is I'll glance over because that's what you do. You, you look and this is part of how your brain works. Your melon wants to see the other person's reactions. The cortex is like, okay, I need all this stuff to filter things in and out in order to you know, maintain a conversation. But, when you do it in this vehicle at the wrong time, it'll beep at you and yell at you, and man, it follows you home and keeps yelling at you. It's ridiculous. Second row in the Grand Highlander. First of all, let's get a little bit of privacy here. Yeah, I like that. Now let's sit down. I have gobs of space, tons of space, I say. I'm 6'1 when I'm wearing my boots, and I have big feet, they're size 13. I'm able to put them underneath the seat in front of me. That is a really big deal because that does help with the leg room. But even without that, I have pretty decent leg room. Mind you, I have stubby legs. I'm like the opposite of Andre who has legs like gazelle. Okay. Headroom is really good. I have a tall torso and I've got about two, two and a half inches before I hit the roof, which is pretty good. Some of these controls you'll see back here, well, aside from the USB-C and the AC120, check this out. Hey, pop open, puppy. There it goes. Yeah. God, there's so many outlets on this thing. Heated and cooled second row seats, and then buttons for the heating air conditioning system back here. This cup holder is interesting, I think. This thing is kind of adjustable. How adjustable? Here it is. Well, comes out. So you guys want a souvenir next time you go to an auto show? Click this, walk out with it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, Toyota. But once you pull this out, then you have this area here, which can use for cargo. It's kind of a pass-through, so to speak. I'm a big fat guy. You guys love watching this part. This is where I somehow find my way into the back seat. Now, this is in the position I left it where I was a little scrunched in the front, but I said if someone's tall sitting behind me, they would fit. Well, guess what? I fit quite well. As a matter of fact, because I slouch, my head is not really hitting the roof. If I move it to the left a little bit, I'm hitting. If I move back, I'm hitting. But just like this, no problem. One more thing about that movie Highlander that I was talking about and how there can only be one, or in this case, there should only be one, the soundtrack was done by Queen, arguably one of the best prog rock bands next to perhaps Rush and a few others, but nonetheless, a remarkable soundtrack. I highly recommend you at least listen to it, but maybe that'll soften the blow. <laughs> and that's because I have the sticker here. This vehicle, as equipped, is $59,878. That is painful, but remember, this is an alternative in my book to the Sequoia. Now, why do I mention that? Well, that's because the Sequoia starts at around $61,000, $62,000, and that's a bare bones rear drive only. This thing is all wheel drive, top of the line turbo hybrid. So, for those of you who are looking at Sequoia and thinking, 
gosh, that's an awful lot of money for not a whole lot of stuff going on and a third row that's not particularly good. You could be looking at a vehicle like this, which will give you a much better third row. And in my book, is far more efficient, far more logical for 90% of you. If you're going to go off-road or if you're going to tow much heavier things than this thing's 5,000 pound capacity, then the Sequoia makes sense. In the end, there can only be one, and it should be this. Forget the regular Highlander, just go to this. It is that good, it's that much of an improvement. I gotta say, well done Toyota. Now, build one of these and make it off-road worthy, and then we're talking. See you guys next time.